a trip to Nicholson Hardy. Obviously, there is not one trip I can make there where I don't come home with plants, and especially this time of year when there are tons of beautiful annuals and perennials for a fall refresh of our gardens. In this case, I found a bunch of stuff that I actually want to use for the containers on my patio. I thought it would be fun for me to bring you along in this process on how I think about the way that I put together a container in terms of texture, in terms of color, height, plant type, uh, flowering versus non-flowering. There's some interesting design concepts that come into play that make a container either stand out or make a container kind of be a little bit blah. And my current container that I'm going to refresh among some others. So I have enough plants here for two different containers, but I might get to one. Maybe I'll get to the second in a bit. But this is the current container that I have. And as you can see, although each plant is great by itself, together it's a little underwhelming. One of the reasons why it's a little underwhelming is that there isn't much contrast, right? So between the Juncus and the Angelonia, there's not a lot of contrast there. So the Angelonia just gets completely lost as well as does the Juncus. Now, I love all of these plants and I especially love this is something that I had in the container over the winter and the spring that I actually just kept in place and kind of tucked in this Angelonia in between the Juncus and the Dichondra. This is Dichondra Silver, Silver Falls. This is a plant that was sent to me by Pan American Seed and so was this Juncus. This is a Juncus Blue Dart and I absolutely love both of them. So I'm going to go ahead, take these plants out, save them, put them aside, and start assembling my fall planter. One thing I also forgot to mention is that I'm going to be using Nicholson Hardy potting soil for refreshing my containers. This is my absolute favorite all-purpose potting soil to use in all of my containers and that is because it does a really really good job of retaining moisture. I never have to worry if I accidentally miss a day or two of watering on my, in any of my containers. So Nichols and Hardy, this is their private label potting soil and it's my favorite. All right, now I'm going to take these plants and do a little design work, see what I like, play with it, put things in different places, and then I'll talk about my decisions that I made, I'll talk about the plants that I picked, and hopefully you can get some inspiration that you can knock off at in your own home. Okay, about 15 minutes and a few bucketfuls of sweat later, I've got both of my fall refresh containers complete and I can't wait to tell you all about each one because I'm really happy with how they turned out. Okay. First, let's start with this guy because it is these Rubeckias that really were the first thing that I saw. I actually saw them when they, a few weeks ago, maybe a week, a week and a half ago, when they were first being unloaded from the truck at Nichols and Hardy, and they really caught my eye. I couldn't stop thinking about them. And when I went back today, it was really just on a whim to see what Nicholson had. This was the first plant that I wanted to include. So this is Rudbeckia Denver Daisy. Uh, Rudbeckia is a perennial. So I have several perennials in these containers. And I want to emphasize, you know, when you're building containers, there's no rule about what types of plants that you can or cannot put in a container. Now, are there plants that do better than others in containers? Yes. But what I always say is, you know, there's no such thing as a mistake in the garden. It's just an experiment. So if you treat everything like an experiment in the garden, then you can never fail. You can't go wrong because it was just an experiment. And experiments either work or they don't. And both things, both results in an experiment are feedback, it's knowledge. So experiments are never failures because we are going into them not hoping for one or the other outcome. We are simply testing to see what happens. So Rudbeckia are perennials. This is an absolutely gorgeous Rudbeckia that has a beautiful purplish tinge to this bicolor. The brown bicolor actually has quite a bit of purple and maroon tones in it. Now, it was those maroon tones that I used as my color guide for some contrasting plants that I wanted to add into this container. So I looked for more dark, moody, colored, maroon colored plants. And the first thing that caught my eye 
um, was this beautiful cordyline. So this is cordyline. This is um, a wonderful ornamental grass and it has that beautiful maroon tone that I wanted. So in both cases in these planters, I really treated the ornamental grass almost as if, uh, imagine a showgirl with her feathers uh, behind her. That's kind of how I thought about incorporating ornamental grass. Ornamental grasses are fantastic in containers because they really lend that thriller pop to your containers. They also create movement in the wind. They have a really unique texture that's different than all the other plants. And so the Coeur d'Alene was uh, a fabulous addition to this overall container. The other thing that I wanted is I wanted something to really fill in and actually hide um, the lower stems here of this Rudbeckia because you'll notice, I mean, really the focal point are these absolutely gorgeous blossoms, but it's not necessarily something that I want to emphasize is this lower portion of the plant that, ha that is kind of bare of blossoming. So I wanted to incorporate uh, a nod to the original Rudbeckia with another Rudbeckia in here that's a little bit more compact. Obviously it's shorter, um, but it, it really emphasizes the Rudbeckia in the, in the contrast. So what I love is it's the same color, but we've got contrasting heights. We've got contrasting, um, you know, overall colors between the bicolor and this one. And then we also have just contrasting fullness. So while this has a much more loose, open uh, habit, this has a much more compact habit. And so I liked the contrast between those two shapes. And then finally, I really was looking for a, a maroon type spiller to add into this container but I found this beautiful coleus and I think it works just as well. So the coleus will continue to grow and I'm gonna hopefully try and train it into a more cascading habit here in this container so that it will have a little bit of a spill effect, but for the most part, it's extremely effective. And that's because this maroon color is picked up in the maroon hints of this Rudbeckia. It provides a much needed contrast to these bright yellows. It also has a completely different texture than the other plants. So when I'm thinking about all the different things that I want to put into a container, I want to make sure that each one is distinctly different. So no, no plant gets lost in it. And then it creates a symphony, right? So we have all the plants that have their different um, parts in the symphony and together they are much better than they are just individually. So that's how I thought about this one. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. One thing I want to remind you is that when you first put together a container, it's certainly not what the ultimate uh, masterpiece is going to look like, right? So all of these plants are gonna continue to develop. This particular Rudbeckia is just full of buds. So it's about to explode into color. I can't wait to share the finished look and I hope I can update this video with the finished product so you can see how it's developed over time. Okay, so that is this one and let me give you some um, names if I have them so this can help you um, in your shopping. So this is Cordeline Burgundy. Cordeline Design Align is the trademark name, Burgundy. So that's that one. This one's Rudbeckia Denver Daisy, the big guy. The small one, I can't find the tag right now, but I will include it in notes. And then what else? And then we have our, oh yeah, we have our coleus and I can't find that label either. It's probably stuffed in a pot or it's inside a bag of potting soil, but I will include that one as well. Okay, let's move on to this one. Now, I, <laughs> I have, You'll notice that I have a theme going on in on my patio. So all of my containers on my patio are this um, kind of slate gray color. And that's my favorite way to design a container arrangement on a patio. That's because if you keep the pots all the same color, then the focus becomes the plants and not the pots. Sometimes it can be a little visually jarring if you have a bunch of pots together and they're all different colors. It's a much more impactful design if all of the pots, they can be different textures, they can be different heights, they can be different shapes, as long as you keep some sort of through line, right? So the through line that I've picked is this slate gray. Now, this container is a smidge smaller than I probably would have used for all of these plants, but I do love this really full look by smushing these plants as much as I could into this container. So this beauty, um, the thing that I wanted to focus on, so my focal plant for this container, and what was my starting point, 
was this absolutely gorgeous echinacea. Um, this is a echinacea artisan collection red ombre, and ombre is true. I love how each individual flower is a different shade. It almost looks like multiple plants in um, one plant, so I love that. And I just thought the color was so unique. And so when I started to look for other plants to round out my container, what I was looking for was this orangey pink, so this dark orangey pink. And that was my um, kind of guiding principle in trying to find other things that would go with it. For this particular container versus this one, I wanted to have a monochromatic feel. So unlike where I have the contrast, although there is this maroon color that's picked up, in general, there's a lot of contrast here. For this particular um, container, I wanted to have a more monochromatic feel. And that's a really good design technique as well. As long as you have a mix of textures, a mix of heights, then a monochromatic scheme can be very impactful and well as well, and it has a very modern feel to it. So one of the first things, just like the showgirl feathers that I included in this container, I've included this beautiful Carex Red Rooster Ornamental Grass as the showgirl feathers for this particular container. It's a beautiful, again, it's a beautiful texture and shape contrast to the echinacea. So the second thing that caught my eye were these incredible celosia. I am a huge celosia fan. Celosia is really tolerant of our hot, hot summer climate. And it has, it's just, it, there are so many different shapes, uh, colors, variations to celosia. It's easy to start by seed. Uh, I grow it as a cut flower in some different spikier forms. I absolutely love it. And it's a wonderful, wonderful flower to transition from su summer into fall here in North Texas. So this was the next one that I chose. And let me see if I have, okay. So this one is celosia green leaf orange. It's beautiful. So all of these plants also, I forgot to mention, are full sun. My particular patio has really intense direct sun in the morning and then has shade all afternoon, which is a really wonderful situation for most plants because they tend, they're not baking all day. They get a lot of direct sun in the morning and then they get to cool off in the evening. So after this celosia, I really wanted to include a spiller because I couldn't find a spiller here. I mean, this is technically my spiller. I wanted a true spiller and I found this absolutely beautiful Calibracoa. This is Proven Winners, Super Bells. Uh, Super Bells is their brand name for, or their you know, trademark name for their Calibracoa. Calibracoa behaves a lot like Petunia. Uh, this is a Calibracoa hybrid, and Calibracoas are known for their cascading effect. So this is going to beautifully cascade down this planter. Again, this is not the finished look for this container. I hope to upload some pictures and share with you what the final results are. But this is Super Bell's Tangerine Punch from Proven Winners. And it has, I love that it has these kind of dark centers. That beautiful dark center is almost the same color as the darkest blooms on this echinacea. So it all kind of ties together. It works beautifully. This red rooster Carex also has some maroon, uh, reddish tones to it that work really, really well with the echinacea. Overall, I'm thrilled with how these containers came out. I, again, I found all of these plants at Nicholson Hardy at their Lover's Lane location closest to the toll road. They are all in the back of the store. So um, of course, take your time enjoying all the gifts. One of the best gift shops in North Texas, hands down, uh, that also happens to be an incredible nursery. So walk to the back of that location and you'll find all of these plants outdoors, but hurry, because they definitely aren't gonna last very long. One question that I know I'm going to get is, okay, you've got some perennials in these containers. This echinacea and these rudbeckia are plants that will come back. So that's some fall inspiration for containers. Go out, um, this is just a fun creative process and it's really nice this time of year when we've kind of started our fall vegetable gardens by seed, we haven't started transplanting out yet, everything's kind of in the holding pattern until the cool, the true cool, cool weather arrives, which is the best time of year to garden in North Texas. The flowers love it, the vegetables love it, we love it, it's Texas State Fair time. You know, when I, when, the t when I always say when the state fair is on, the gardens are going. So hope you enjoyed that. And yeah, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. This is our new YouTube channel. And I hope to 
keep doing more and more videos here. So I really, really appreciate your feedback. If you can leave some comments and let me know what kind of videos that you would like to see. Are there particular topics that you'd love to see videos on, things that interest you? Do you have any questions? You could leave a question in a comment below and then I could make a YouTube video response to that. For all sorts of more information about gardening in North Texas, be sure to go to thedallasgarden.com. You'll also find a link on that website to all of our classes. So the Dallas Garden School offers classes in digital courses, virtual online classes. We also are doing in-person classes. Um, we have lots of lots of content and education and information on our Instagram page. That's at the Dallas Garden School. So come find us. And also don't forget when you're at the DallasGarden.com to look for some of our great free resources like a fall garden planting guide. Okay, I'll see you back here soon.